Devon, looking at auditory processing disorder and the home situation now, what are the early signs that uh, your child might actually have auditory processing disorder? Well, I know a lot of parents complain that their children don't listen or that they ignore them. Now, for our child with auditory processing disorder, it really could be that they, in essence, don't hear what the parent says or it's not that they don't hear, it was that they don't process the instruction um, as they should so that then they don't respond in an appropriate way. I guess it would be very easy for a parent to say, my child doesn't listen to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, similar to the classroom situation, maybe we need to give them a break and allow a longer time to, for them to respond. Yes, well, if the parent is aware that the child has an auditory processing disorder, then that's a very good strategy. But most, many parents will just complain that their child doesn't listen or doesn't respond, not being aware that the child actually has a problem. And that can you know, end up in a distressing situation for both the child and the parent because the parent might be reprimanding the child when in fact the child is doing the best they can. Do you find that sometimes children do unpredictable things because perhaps they only heard half the instruction? Indeed they do. For example, a parent might say to a child, please don't put your shoes on the table, but the child only hears, put your shoes on the table. And so the child will do exactly the opposite to what the parents requested because they've misinterpreted that instruction. So it might actually be really difficult to diagnose the problem or think that there's a problem because you're too busy just getting frustrated about the fact that the exactly. child's done something irregular or unpredictable. That's right. Do we, do we find some of the symptoms are the same as in the classroom, like uh, background noise in the home? Yes, that very much can be a problem. And we know these days lots of families have their television on all day. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Is the television in the background a problem? Yes, it is, particularly for our child with auditory processing because if, you know, mum's asking them to go to their room and, you know, do something specific or collect something from their room and the television's on, they're not going to be able to uh, process what the mothers or the parents ask them to do. I know in one of our earlier discussions you mentioned that uh, children sometimes cover their ears when they're being shouted at. Um, is, is that actually causing them discomfort? Does it cause them pain or is it just a, a frustration reaction? I think it's not so much a physical uh, symptom. It's more a psychological symptom because the sound really bothers them. And it's really hard to tell in a young child if it does cause pain, but it's more that it's just distresses them. It's just irritating to the child, mm. and so they want to block out that back background noise. And I guess perhaps another source for irregular behaviour, if that was the case. Yes, yes. And it would be a red flag to a parent that if a child is constantly putting their hands over their ears, something's not right, and mm. they need to um, seek some professional advice about that. How would a parent know whether it was an auditory processing problem or a hearing acuity problem? Would they have any idea as to whether it was which one? I don't think so. So that's why it's really important, number one, is to get the hearing checked before we do anything else. Particularly for a child that's had a history of multiple ear infections, because we know that when the brain needs to be processing speech and hearing speech clearly to develop the auditory pathways, recurrent ear infections interrupt that process. So if a child has a history of recurrent ear infections, that's more likely, that child is more likely to possibly have an auditory processing mm. disorder. When we think about all these symptoms combined, does that also sometimes uh, lead to memory loss? Do, do children just forget what to do? do is it the, do they just listen to so much and think, I don't understand it, I'm just not going to do it, and then just forget? That happens at home a lot. I think that switching off behaviour, very similar to the classroom, that the capacity for the brain to hold on to what... Um, what a child hears is very much reduced when you have auditory processing. And so when the brain goes on overload, the child will just switch off and stop listening because they just 
can't process any more information. And of course, the parent could see that as disobedience or, um, you know, being oppositional, whereas in fact, the child just cannot take in any more information. Let's say that you didn't think that your child had any sort of auditory problem at all, yet they uh, didn't like going to school or they were hesitant about going to school. Could that, could that be a, a signal that something's not right? Exactly. And so then a, a parent really needs to take action there and try and, you know, they might even start off with their GP. If the child's starting to become reluctant to go to school, well, we know that they're not happy at school and whatever's causing that distress needs to be investigated.